Those two pills was all he needed. Lungs are filling with fluid. So Patient's lungs are severely compromised. Worms could easily have been a coincidence. Well, what if it's an lymphoma? Brought him for chemo. You blame House, not me. I'm not running away from what I did because you want to pretend I never did it. It could be lymphoma. Prep him for chemo. They're only forgetting about 65 different steps. That's like going on a first date and deciding what color chrysanthemums you would like at your funeral. Very excited to be reacting to House MD season six, episode eight, Teamwork. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos and this will be episode 119. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. I got seven scenes to shoot today on half of what we used to spend. Free content everywhere, DVD sales in the toilet. We're gonna make it about the performances. We get to do something we like, we get to touch people's lives and we get paid for it. Let's make a movie. And action. Ah, my eyes I feel like they're exploding. Get an ambulance now. You took a patient's life, you lied about it for weeks, but I can live with it. I have no idea what I've been living with. We need to get away from Princeton Plainsboro. Porn actor Hank Hardwick, born Henry Lefkowitz, collapsed on the job with extreme photophobia. This envelope is oddly medical license shaped. House is back in charge. We get to treat a porn star. We're leaving the team and the hospital effective immediately. Are you sure about this? Yes. We'll miss you. We'll miss all of you too. Run an STD panel on a talk screen. And an A to screen for autoimmune. Oh, it's just you. Here's hoping you're good at multitasking. The history of alcohol or substance abuse. My wife used to smoke a little pot, but I, I never touched this stuff. If treating a porn actor isn't enough to make Chase and Cameron stay, then nothing will. So what do we know so far? Hank Hardwick got severe instant light sensitivity and has had a clean workup from the first team. That means likely negative bloods and scans. The thing any a &E would worry about with sudden symptoms like that would be meningitis, especially in his line of work where exposure is part of the job description. But what other than meningitis could it be? Migraines are commonly triggered by light, but it'd be unusual for it to just start now. A sudden bleed in the brain called a subarachnoid hemorrhage could definitely do it as well. He said he feels like his eyes were exploding, so inflammation of the optic nerve behind the eyes might do that, which could be related to MS. We know people who work in the adult industry have high rates of mental health disorders like depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. He might be on the treatment lithium, which can also cause sensitive vision. If he has ADHD, then Ritalin could potentially do it as well. If it hasn't been done already, I definitely want to scan his brains for signs of raised pressure or a bleed, look in the back of his eyes for optic neuritis, sample of his spinal fluid and test for meningitis, and signs of MS antibodies called oligoclonal bands, and then take it from there. But let's get more clues. Hey Mary, is she happy you do porn? Very. So she does it too. You ever get jealous? It's a job. Have you ever suffered depression or psychosis? It's not a blotch on my medical records. I wasn't driven to this. Oh, my arms are killing me. It's like tetany, your muscles are contracting. Jew with megalophallus, photophobia, and muscle spasm. I leave this office by six every day. It does sound pretty dull. No wonder you want to work for me. Maybe you're right. The only link between eye and muscle is the brain. Which means it's... The tie line was wonderful. Thanks for asking. Tob thinks it's a brain issue. 13 thinks it's multifocal. And neither of them wants to work here. Cerebral vasculitis would explain both the eye and arm findings. EMG and nerve biopsy while you're at it. I'll be at lunch. He's got me running every test and treatment by myself. Which is why you should be out the door too. You owe me this. It could also be a severe vitamin D deficiency. He's a restrictive diet, works long hours indoor. I'll ask him in ultraviolet light and IV vitamins for a severe vitamin D deficiency. Believe it or not, megalophallus is a genuine medical word. It's a complication of sickle cell anemia where the blood can't drain from the brain below the belt and causes an erection for longer than four hours called priapism. This can damage the tunica albuginea of the penis leading to significant enlargement. That may not be as good as it sounds though as sometimes it can be accompanied by erectile dysfunction. Either way, that isn't the muscle we're focusing on as all these other muscles seem to be contracting uncontrollably. The title of the episode is Teamwork and there seems to be a focus on the patient's relationship as he's getting defensive about having any mental health difficulties. What if he's actually jealous of his wife and because their marriage has deteriorated, she's tried to poison him or better yet, what if her somehow getting Botox injections leaked out to him? Maybe she had an injection lying around that made its way into his coffee. That would be such a rogue diagnosis. Poisoning though could also happen with lead, mercury, arsenic, or even ricin and still cause all these neurological symptoms. And his wife 
definitely has a motive. There must be some kind of scandalous behavior going on here, or maybe Universal is making a grand statement about the stigma of sex workers by distracting us with that, all while the true cause is lupus. <laughs> Let's get more clues. Do you guys actually work together? So do you uh, watch your work? Think what you want. We're proud of what we do. We've helped a lot of couples by taking sex out of some deep, dark dungeon. Hank, are you all right? Just a nosebleed. To heal hemorrhages. We were wrong, so was Foreman. Is that? He's not without talent. Meningococcemia. Broad spectrum antibiotics for the meningococcemia. When the full horror of his homicide hits you, your marriage will blow up. No part of you wants to just toss this rule book everyone's forced on you. So you're committed except when you're not committed. You have a fever. Means the antibiotics aren't working. Right now, your drug of choice is your old team. And like any addict, you're trying to solve some other problem and it's not going to work. Antibiotics wouldn't work if his sinuses were infected and clogged. The patient's nose is bleeding just like House's heart at the loss of all but one of his co-workers. How tragic. Who'd have known the ongoing torture and stalking by a private investigator while releasing his employee's deepest, darkest secrets wouldn't get him the Employer of the Year award? It's a conspiracy. Well, this patient may get robbed of his life if we don't figure out why he has this new symptom, a petechial rash. I had a patient just last week who had this rash that didn't disappear when a glass was held against it and was getting a new headache and fever. I sent them straight to the hospital for suspected meningococcal septicemia. The team here have clearly thought of that already though, and it doesn't seem to be responding to antibiotics. So what could cause that rash along with light sensitivity and muscle spasms? In all honesty, Hanak Shonlein Purpura could potentially do it, and he could have picked up a bacterial trigger like E. coli if his work involved mouth to south situations. E. coli isn't technically a sexually transmitted disease, but it definitely can be passed that way. Hanok Shonlein Purpura is more common in children though, and the team have already given steroids, which hasn't really gotten the patient better. So what else could it be? In all fairness, an absolutely wild condition could be scurvy. You know, right at the start, the other guy mentioned that the bagel was as hard as a brick. What if they don't get access to much fresh fruit and vegetables, so the only one of their five a day they can consume are peach emojis? That would be absolutely wild and quite amusing, especially considering how the couple are trying to show off their lifestyle as desirable. It was also definitely passed as a house diagnosis and vitamin C would be all they need for rapid reversal, so scurvy has to be my first diagnostic guess. Let's get more clues. You surgically drain his sinuses, the drugs will work. Tell me that didn't feel good. I can't work with you. Actually, you can. I was the one who had the problem. I don't anymore. Let him drain the pack of his anesthetics and sterile gauze. His sinuses are clear. Antibiotics should work this time. Why did you forgive me? I'm confused. You've been harder on the patient than you've been on me. You feel shame, guilt. My stomach. Oh, it really hurts. His liver's failing. His liver's failing and his abdomen keeps filling with fluid, so... It's not meningococcemia. Well, my scurvy theory is in deep waters now, unless he's out in deep waters between shoots and makes his stomach home to gallons of pirate mead. His lack of eye patch tells me that's unlikely, so what else could cause light sensitivity, cramping, bleeding, a pinprick rash, and now liver failure. They could be traveling a lot in all fairness, which can expose them to dengue or yellow fever. It could mimic a meningococcal infection, but wouldn't necessarily respond to the same antibiotics. Another really spicy one would be Ebola, which is a type of viral hemorrhagic fever. These are particularly nasty and can have a mortality rate of 50%. There isn't a specific cure for it either, as treatment would just include supporting the patient until his body fights off the virus and then eventually sourcing him a new liver. This episode is called Teamwork and has interesting themes which are all about the couple mentioning they're in tune in all the ways that count. What if the wife is a donor match but she decides not to donate because the scar could potentially ruin her career? Oh, that would fit this so well. well but which infection then should I go for? Well, yellow fever, dengue are also not treatable but potentially hepatitis could do it. All right, I'm gonna go with hepatitis B as my second diagnostic guess. He's definitely in an at-risk group as a sex worker, and even though the diagnosis isn't so spicy, the controversy afterwards could make up for it. Question for you smart people. Would you give a partial liver transplant to your partner or family member? What would you expect in return? Answers down below.
There's inflammation inside the bile channels, sclerosing cholangitis. Causing small strokes. Enough, enough! It fits. Prep the patient for an ERCP. Tell him to start looking for a liver donor. She blames me for Dybala's murder, not you. I created the big, bad, evil climate that allowed it to happen. What are you doing here? Waiting for you to take a nap so I can surge into the lead. You're pretending to assume we're all coming back without actually asking us. Because you can't face the rejection. They'll never grant an organ to someone working in your profession. You're saying I have to change jobs? I'm not gonna live my life afraid like my parents did. Barely letting me play outside. I'm in the common bile duct. It's that mass. Gallstone? That's not a gallstone. This liver is completely filled with worms. There is nothing common about what they just found in the common bile duct. This brings back memories I would have rather forgotten. I was on general surgery and we were doing an appendix removal and as soon as we got the camera in, we saw the appendix was completely crawling with worms. How did they get in there? Well, the patient had recently come back from India and was a regular at street food centers. He could have easily picked up some parasitic eggs that were looking to relocate. Thankfully, the parasites he had were quite common and easy to get rid of, as are most worms called hookworms, and they are particularly susceptible to a medicine called mebendazole. Two doses and he was back to his dosas in no time. So what about this patient's worms? Specifically, they look like pinworms, which are usually present around the anus and can cause itching in children. In very rare cases, these can burrow into the liver and cause all kinds of chaos like granulomas and necrosis or cell death. Infection with this parasite is actually so common that there are around 30 million people in the US alone who are infected and around a billion worldwide. That's one in eight of you. Could this be less about the worms though and more about what the worms represent? The fact that he has these could show that he's been to some exotic places that his wife may not know about. It seems like even though he said his childhood was clean, he actually was repressed with his parents not letting him play outside. So now he plays outside every day or what if the parasites are just in his liver because they like the taste of metal? Wilson's disease could cause his life sensitivity, abnormal rashes and liver failure, which also explains the bleeding. Maybe pinworms like the taste of fresh copper in the morning and decided to follow it. Treatment would be with chelation and we may be able to save the patient's liver and his playtime. It's tempting, but I'm not gonna go all in just yet. Let's get more clues. You have strongyloides, also known as threadworms. And what's the treatment? Two mebendazole pills. You'll be fine. You live too. No one knows why you're leaving PPTH. If you're staring at a pit bull, you're better off staying right where you are. That way he can't bite you in the ass. I thought you said those two pills was all he needed. Lungs are filling with fluid. So patient's lungs are severely compromised. Worms could easily have been a coincidence. Well, what if it's lymphoma? Brought in for chemo. You blame House, not me. I'm not running away from what I did because you want to pretend I never did it. It could be lymphoma. Prep him for chemo. They're only forgetting about 65 different steps. That's like going on a first date and deciding what color chrysanthemums you would like at your funeral. Where's the lymph node examination, the blood film, the biopsy, the cancer immunotyping? No, we'll just throw some nuclear meds at you and hopefully they'll do something. Cancer treatment is getting exceptionally personalized nowadays. Even oncologists can't keep a track of all the subtypes. Speaking of cancer though, there was an incredible story of an Australian pathologist named Richard Scolia who got diagnosed with the most aggressive brain tumor called glioblastoma multiforme. Just in case that wasn't enough, he had the most aggressive subtype with a life expectancy of less than one year. But with his experience and appetite for risk and in true Australian fashion, he said, sod that. He created a new chemotherapy regimen with a mix of three drugs given together all at once before having his cancer removed surgically. Now a year later he's had no recurrence at the time that the average patient with the condition would no longer be alive. Not only did he save his life but his doubling as a guinea pig could save thousands more in the future as he's inspired clinical trials. He could still get a recurrence though so we'll continue with cautious optimism. Also strongyloides seen with a camera. It tends to be microscopic so a slight blunder from the team there that usually gets diagnosed in biopsies or stool samples in all fairness. Either way, we know the patient's heart was next on the hit list, which is why he was frothing at the mouth. They make you think it's the lungs because he can't breathe, but when the heart can't move the fluid, then it builds up in the first organ behind the left ventricle, which is the lungs. Do you know which condition would hit the liver, brain, and then heart next? Wilson's disease. Okay. I'm going for it. Wilson's disease is my third and final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. You feel abandoned by Cuddy, so you're reaching out to people you know for comfort. I just need a good friend. He's peeing blood. BP's rising. Hey, he's going into cardiac arrest. Clear. He's bleeding out. 
We've got him stabilized, but no red cells, no white cells, practically no platelets either. The leukemic leukemia marrow's not making enough normals. I blade the patient's bone marrow. Find my donor match. A uh, series of painless injections. Excuse me. I want to be on the tank. Four candidates, three spots. I got a tough decision ahead of me. Can you get rid of the crow's feet altogether, or is it better to leave a trace of them? Hang on a second. It's me and 13. Stop the ablation. The worms weren't hurting him. They were helping him. He has extra intestinal Crohn's. The worms were keeping the Crohn's in check, teaching his immune system what it should have learned from eating dirt growing up. Let's start him on methylprednisolone. And some helmets. What's Crohn's disease? In all fairness, it can present in this insidious, non-specific way. But how could I have figured that out? Even if I got the whole he didn't go outside, that means he has an autoimmune condition, then why Crohn's and not like lupus, which fits even better? The whole worms regulating the immune system theory is so interesting though. It's possible, but there's no way there's any research that backs that. Now Tao wants to reinfect him with worms as a treatment. I'm pretty sure the patient won't be best pleased with that as a management option, but it's not like there's any other center that can give him a second opinion. Interesting though that the rash wasn't really a characteristic of Crohn's either, as that usually forms erythema nodosum, which is small red bumps on the legs, or pyodoma gangrenosum, which is like a circular, almost necrotic looking ulcerated lesion that just doesn't heal and can get really smelly. In all fairness though, Crohn's even as a gut condition can affect pretty much any body system. I've got to admit, I think there's zero chance I would have gotten that or maybe they're wrong. Let's find out. I want to be on the team. This job gives you the thrill you used to find through philandering. I'll let you know. I told how someone to work for him again. I was in love with you. I was an idiot. Tried to be like you, tried to understand you. You did kill Dabala by playing God. I don't even think of them as people. They're just lab rats for your little puzzles. All you care about is that Tau and 13 fell for your game. You ruined him. Can't even see the sanctity of a human life anymore. I loved you and I loved Chase. There's no way back for either of you. Three out of four ain't bad. Cameron's gone! What will Chase do without his consciousness beside him? Also, it seems like it was extra intestinal Crohn's, quite spicy and loved the storyline here. Interested to see what the next huge scandal is, as it seems like the Dybala situation is pretty much resolved for now. I'm gonna say 7.7 .7 out of 10 entertainment, 5.6 out of 10 accuracy, 7.1 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where a teenage girl gets to sneak backstage here.